This past week, a lot of exciting announcements were made during GDC, the Game Developers Conference in San Francisco. We have selected seven of our most favorite VR highlights from this event, which we'll tell you about in this video. Coming up, this is an episode in our Dive into VR series where we share our excitement about interesting VR technology and news. Subscribe if you haven't yet to see more VR videos like this one. Number one, HP announced a new Windows Mixed Reality headset called Reverb that has almost twice the resolution as a 5 Pro featuring as a resolution of 2160 times 2120 per eye. That is pretty impressive. The headset comes with two motion controllers which look like the original Windows Mixed Reality controllers, has LCD panels and a 114 degree field of view. And it has the same inside out tracking sensors like other Windows Mixed Reality headsets. The Reverb headsets uses DisplayPort 1.3 and USB 3.0, unlike the first HP headset that uses HDMI and USB 3.0. HP will be focusing on enterprise businesses first though, with a Pro Edition model for a price of $649, which comes with a short cable that can be used with VR backpack PCs and a washable leather face cushion. There will be a consumer model available in late April priced at $600. The headset will be the same except you don't get the short cable and face cushion. So do you think we should get our first Windows Mixed Reality headset for the channel? I am curious about hearing your thoughts on this. Number 2. NVIDIA GeForce Now will enable wireless VR and AR. If you don't know what it is, GeForce Now is a cloud gaming service that allows you to play any games in high resolution anytime on any Mac or PC. It does not matter what specifications you have since you'll be streaming the games on your PC while using Nvidia's powerful PCs in their data centers. You do need a fast internet connection for this. Nvidia announced this week that GeForce Now will enable wireless VR and AR, making it possible for anyone to play heavyweight PC VR. VR games without an expensive PC. I think this is very exciting, especially with 5G networks coming up. This might make VR and AR much more accessible. Number 3. The Oculus Rift S is the latest headset announcement by Oculus. This is a PC VR headset featuring inside-out tracking using Oculus Insight, a new tracking technology that is also found on the Oculus Quest. Using the five tracking sensors on the headset, you get full room skills tracking without the need for external sensors. Using computer vision algorithms, the headset can capture, trace and navigate real-life rooms in real time, making it possible for pass through. This means you will be able to look at your real life room while wearing the headset, well, somewhat because it won't be super high quality. Allegedly, this also makes light augmented reality solutions possible. So these are the Rift S specifications versus the Oculus Rift specifications. I am not going through them in depth at this moment until later when we can test it out. During Oculus Connect 5, we left impressed trying out the Quest's tracking and pass through. So we have hope for this headset as well. The Rift S features five tracking sensors on the headset, whereas the Oculus Quest features four. So the tracking could be better on the Rift S. But before we make any judgments, we will try it out ourselves first. We are excited to let you know that we are trying it out next week at PAX East in Boston and we will report back then. Next to these new features, the headset also has a Halo Design head strap, much like the PSVR. It also has integrated audio, much like the Quest and the Go. This means there are no headphones attached. But if you want to use your own headphones, you can use the headphone jack. The Rift S will share the same platform as the Rift, as well as cross buy and cross play with the Quest. The latter could enlarge the player base for multiplayer VR games. The Oculus Rift S is coming this spring. Whether this means it will be in April or right before the summer is unsure right now, but let's hope it's sooner than later. While you are watching this video, please leave a like to show your support if you found this video helpful. Number 4. During GDC, Oculus also announced new AAA PC VR games and new games to the Oculus Quest launch lineup. The ones we are hyped for the most is Beat Saber for the Quest, since we've been playing Beat Saber almost religiously as a workout. With the Quest, we would be able to play it anywhere we go, even on holiday trips. Imagine playing it on top of a mountain. <laughs> Let's not fall off a cliff though. Other games announced for the quest are Shadow Point, a room skill puzzle game narrated by Sir Patrick Stewart. 
Another game is Journey of the Gods, a fantasy VR game that is set to play like Nintendo's The Legend of Zelda. A sequel to Dead and Buried will also come that allows cross-platform play between Oculus Quest and Rift S. These are exciting times. Number 5. Qualcomm announced an update to their standalone Snapdragon 845 VR reference design at GDC. This update makes it possible to connect this headset to a PC wirelessly. This new initiative is called Boundless XR for PC and uses a wireless chip that will allow high bandwidth 60 gig gigahertz connections to a PC that is ready to communicate with it. We will see this reference design first in the not yet launched Pico Neo 2. This will be a standalone headset that you can use to play mobile VR games and if you connect it to your PC you can even play Steam VR games wirelessly. Pico has been making VR headsets mainly aimed at the enterprise. We have checked their 3 dof headsets out before and we feel that they make some solid headsets, so we are quite excited to try out the Neo 2. Qualcomm has been developing reference VR headsets that companies can use as a template of some sort to build their own headsets. So this might hint what the capabilities of future VR headsets by Oculus or HTC are. Number 6. HTC also had an announcement during GDC. They have plans to make a lip tracking module for the 5 Pro. This module would be able to track the player's mouth movements, which will then accurately mimic an in-game avatar's facial expression in real time. Right now, HTC does not have plans to make it available for consumers, but you never know and we hope they will. Because I think that if you can see people's mouth moving in VR, that would definitely level up social VR games like VR Chat for me. Number 7. The Kronos Group has released the OpenXR specification for VR and AR standards publicly. This means that developers can use this specification to make VR software that runs quick and efficient across various VR headsets. This is really good news for future VR content since this could help developers make content faster and can also help simplify making their content accessible across multiple platforms. HTC, Oculus, Valve, Nvidia, Microsoft and Google are some of the companies that support OpenXR. Good and more cross-platform content is what we need right now. So this is exciting news. Before I end this video, I wanted to give you a heads up about something. Jerry and I will be attending PAX East in Boston next week Wednesday until Saturday where we get to try out the Oculus Rift S but also try out the Oculus Quest again. Uh, so we will definitely report back about what we find out over there. But if you have any questions at all, please uh, about these devices, let us know down below so we can uh, uh, include that in the video of next week. And also after that, straight straight after that, really good planning, guess Jerry. But uh, we are going to Taiwan and uh, Japan as a holiday. Uh, this will be just some quality time for me and Jerry, um, just spending some time together and just checking out Asia. Uh, so you will probably hear a little bit less from us during that time. Uh, we'll be back uh, the, in the middle of April, but we also will have some videos scheduled for you. So uh, definitely do not have to worry about that. Uh, we're actually making some extra videos right now so that we can schedule it during that time. And during our time in Asia, we will also try and find something VR uh, related that we could record and then post after our trip. So definitely stay tuned for that. Anyway, let us know down below what you think of the GDC announcements. For example, which one is your favorite? And if you have any questions about the Oculus Rift S or the Oculus Quest for us next week to include in our video, definitely let us know down below. And well, this is also the end of this video. A special thank you goes to Art Armin, our right hand patron. And a special shout out goes to his Patreon page. Thank you all so much for your support and for watching this video. That's the biggest support that you can give us. And and as always, VR on! Before I end this video, I wanted to give you a heads up about something. Blah, blah, blah. Before we end, when we get to try out the Oculus Rift S and also the, uh, the Oculus 